Karnataka Chief Minister Siddaramaiah just over a year ago had led a viral and very infectious campaign called PCM in order to oust the then BJP government under Basavaraj Bommai. Well, the phrase PCM appears to be back to haunt Siddaramaiah now and the heat is getting to him. The opposition BJP is holding protests demanding Siddaramaiah's resignation. Demonstrators have gathered at the Vidana Sauda, which is the assembly building, holding placards and shouting slogans since yesterday. Well, despite the growing pressure, Siddaramaiah remains defiant, refuses to step down from his position, but he is demonstrating that he's feeling the heat. Today, when a journalist tried to ask him a question, he snapped. Political turmoil in Karnataka. Trouble mounts for Chief Minister Siddharamaya, who faces an investigation in land allotment to his wife by the Mysore Urban Development Authority. The BJP on Thursday held protests demanding the Chief Minister's resignation. Demonstrators gathered at the Vidhan Sauda holding placards and shouting slogans. After session court verdict, the BJP has conducted a series of protests, including today's protest in front of Gandhi statue in Vidhan Sauda, demanding its resignation immediately. They allege that if Chief Minister Sidramia continues to be in power when the investigation is happening at Loka Yukta, it might influence the investigation. Court is saying, not uh, BJP, not anybody, court is saying it is a scandal. So that's why we are uh, asking the resignation of Mr. Sidramaya. When court is given the verdict, Sidramaya naturally is no right to sit in the, that seat. He went to High Court and High Court has uh, upheld the decision of the Governor to further enquire into Mr. Sidramaya's land scam. So Mr. Sidramaya being a Chief Minister, there cannot be a fair uh, enquiry into the whole thing. So it is, uh, uh, he should resign. <laughs> Despite the mounting pressure, Siddhar Maya remained defiant, refusing to step down from his position. Congress leaders rallied behind Siddhar Maya. There is no question of Chief Minister resigning. It is a political conspiracy. I have also tested, tested this conspiracy. We will fight it out legally and politically. CM sir, Amid the chaos, Siddharmaiya lost his school when a reporter asked him about the BGP agitation. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> The uproar follows a Bengaluru Special Court's directive to the Lokayukta police to file a case against him in the alleged Muda scam. The case involves not only Siddharamaya but also his wife, Parvati, brother in law Mallikarjun Swami, and Devaraju, the alleged landowner. With the High Court also giving a go ahead, the Lokayukta police are now set to start an investigation. With Sagai Raj and Anaga Keshav in Bengaluru, Bureau Report, India Today. Thank you, thank you. And I just wanted to show you how uh, Mr. Sidharamaya, the chief minister, lost his school and vented his anger at a journalist who was trying to get a reaction from him over the BJP's demand for his resignation. Just take a look at this. Let's put the sound up on that. CM sir, today BJP are protesting his demand for resignation. Okay, okay.
and a big move by the Sidramaya government in Karnataka right at a time when the Muda scam heat is rising against the chief minister. The Sidramaya government has now officially withdrawn sanction for CBI investigations in the state of Karnataka. The Sidramaya government has basically withdrawn consent for CBI probes in the state of Karnataka, which means that the CBI cannot investigate anything in Karnataka. That consent has been withdrawn. The Sidhu government effectively clipping the CBI's wings in the state of Karnataka. It has withdrawn probe permission that otherwise exists for the CBI. No unrestricted CBI probe, therefore, can happen in Karnataka. The government will have to be involved. The government and state machinery will have to be involved. The Congress has said action has been taken to stop CBI misuse. But very, very strange how this comes just at a time when the decks appear to be cleared for an investigation into the Muda scam, which has implicated family members of Chief Minister Siddharamaya. The Congress says the CBI action is not because of the Muda case, but the timing could not be more glaring. Listen in to the Law Minister of Karnataka, H.K. Pati. Now, Tagir Kundru and Taddu, Spashtu Vagide, we are day in day out uh, expressing our concern that CBI is misused. They refuse to file charge sheet. They refuse to probe into that. Uh, mines case. Mines Prakana. Mines Prakana, there are uh, empty number of cases. Now, I'm uh, telling empty number of cases, not one, two, three. More than that. My colleague Sagai Raj joins me live from Bengaluru. Sagai, uh, uh, the, the Congress government in Karnataka claims that this withdrawal of consent to CBI probes in Karnataka has nothing to do with the Muda, Muda scam. Uh, you know, but that's a bit of a joke, isn't it? I mean, the timing couldn't be more glaring. Obviously, it has something to do with the rising heat over maybe the Muda and other scams, especially since it is at the doorstep of the chief minister. Absolutely. This comes day after the session court had pronounced the verdict saying that the case should be uh, investigated by an autonomous body within the state of Karnataka, that is Loka Yukta. And when we spoke to the lawyer yesterday, where she was also categorically mentioned that if at all, if this case has been transferred to the central agency, it is even more better. But they still believe that Loka Yukta can good, uh, do a fair job in this particular investigation. They also went on to say that they will wait for the report from the Loka Yukta and thereafter mm. uh, they will uh, try to approach the uh, Karnataka High Court uh, demanding for a CBI inquiry. Meanwhile, I got to learn from the sources that the complainant, there are uh, multiple complainants in this Muda case, Abraham, Sneha, Mai Krishna and few other activists. And one of the mm. activists was contemplating to knock the doors of Karnataka High Court, requesting Karnataka High Court to grant permission to transfer the case to CBI and much mm. before they could even do that the Karnataka cabin has won the race and uh, called for a cabinet meeting today and took a decision where uh, they have reprimanded the permission which was been given under Delhi established police establishment act 1946 which allows the CBI to go ahead and inquire freely without any kind of restriction in the state now they have to take the concern on the other side, if you notice, uh, the law and the parliament affairs minister, H.K. Patil, has said that CBI has been misused by the central government time and again. And he has yeah. also mentioned that in many cases, they didn't even file the charge sheet. And he has categorically mentioned it was not because of the Moda case, because of the kind of uh, behavior of CBI officers and the CBI investigating office, which has involved in several cases in the state of Karnataka. So now uh, they if they have any kind of independent case, they have to take mm. the consent of the government. If at all, if the government gives any kind of consent, that's when the CBI can go ahead and inquire. If at all, if the court orders for a CBI inquiry, the government doesn't have any say in this particular case. So, so any it's, any other case. So high court or any court can decide on the CBI inquiry. Okay. But if at all, the central agency have to independently inquire here in the state of Karnataka, they have to take the consent of the state government.
It's just a little hard to believe that this has nothing to do with the Muda scam. The Congress, H.K. Patil, the law minister of Karnataka says it has nothing to do with the Muda scam. It is part of the overall, uh, you know, counteraction against uh, uh, abuse of power by central agencies. But this comes, as Sagai said, literally a day after the court had basically, uh, 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 you know, cleared the decks for an investigation by whatever agency into allegations against Sidramaya and his family in the Muda scam. Sagai, thanks very much for that uh, live ground update. Joining me live now to face off on this latest news concerning uh, uh, the investigation into the Muda scam and what we've just broken for you, our viewers. Uh, Prashant GS is spokesperson of the Karnataka BJP. Syed Asad Abbas is a political analyst. He speaks against the BJP on this particular issue. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much for your time here. Prashant, to you first. Uh, do you buy this? The government in Karnataka says that the withdrawal of consent to BJP, uh, to CBI uh, investigations in Karnataka has nothing to do with the, you know, with the, with the Muda scam. Do you buy that? Shiv, not only me, probably if you ask a small child on the road who is now aware of this Muda scam, the child also will laugh it up to say that. And the timing is of utmost suspicion. If at hmm. all... HK Patil want to do this. He could have done it last week to say that, look, we are, we are not doing this because ultimately the state government uh, will have to give the permission unless mm. the court intervenes and hands over the investigation to the CBI. But the timing of the decision is suspect. They are aware. Karna, Sidramaya and his team are completely aware that Sidramaya is covered in muck because if you look at the judgment in the Muda scam, and forget about the 218 BNSS, but on the merits of the matter, especially at para 170, page 177 of the judgment, where the court says that it shocks the conscience of the court that uh, the CM's wife has got a owner, uh, she's a proud owner of sites for 56 crores. And at page 186, they talk about I'll come to how uh, the CM being the leader, uh, he cannot shy away from the investigation. So therefore, at para 51, 54 and 56, the indictment of Sidramaya is very clear. Saying that on the merits I'll of come the to also, I'll come to what the court has said in just a moment, Prashant. Let's let let's let's go through the questions one by one so we don't uh, uh, you know load up each question with too much information so it's clear for our viewers. But Syed, the, the you know this is a this is a bit of a joke. Uh, the the government in Karnataka literally a day after the court has cleared the decks for an investigation uh, into the Muda scam in which the family members of Mrs. Sidramaya have been implicated, they withdraw consent for any probe by the CBI, and the government wants the public to believe it has nothing to do with the Muda scam. This is a joke, Syed. Where do you stand? Shivaru Saba, I stand in the same place where the Supreme Court made an observation that in the case of Arvind K. Jival, the CBI was once again used as a caged parrot. Not just that, Sahab, if you but see it, any non-BJP ruling state, be it Hemant Sorain, be it Arvind K. Jival, be it Sidra Maya, CBI is being used to harass the political leaders of the opposition party. Also, we need to understand. But why wasn't this done earlier, Sayed? All that is fine, but Sayed, why wasn't this done earlier decision. then? Why now? Why I would, I would, I would, I'd really appreciate my friend from yeah, the BJP. Let's, let's I get his time, Prashant. Let's have a civil debate so that you yes. get your full time and I get mine. Now, coming straight to the point, the fact of the matter is why the Sidramaya government or the Congress ruling cabinet here will not allow the CBI for the same factor. The court, High Court in its observation also made a ruling that Karnataka Lokayta is welcome for the investigation. FIR can mm. be filed. You can go yeah. ahead. The fact I come from the land of Karnataka, the land of Kuampu and Baswana, we believe in social equality and justice. Let there be Justice, half it. Karnataka Lokayta is the same which prosecuted Mr. Yediyarappa, the former chief minister of uh, BJP. Also, as a matter of fact, let us understand if you're blaming Sidra Maya well and good, what about GT Deva Gowda, who's also a beneficiary? What about Union Minister H.D. Kumara Swami, who's also a beneficiary under Muda? Uh, mm. BJP MLC Vishwanath as well, and not just that, SR Mahesh. Why the governor is there to prosecute Sidra Maya only because he's from the Congress? What no, about the but, other but, leaders but, who are but, there? But, but Sayed, but Sayed, Sayed, Sayed Sidramaya himself has said, let there be a full investigation. All the names will come out. The BJP is saying, let there be a full investigation. So why not? All these moves, you know, to try and challenge the sanction for prosecution, clipping the wings of the CBI. You know, these are not the actions of someone who has, you know, nothing to hide. They suggest that there is an attempt to cover up.
Shiv Saab, absolutely. This is a pointed question and I'll answer it accordingly. And uh, that's the rightful question. So Sidra Maya, according to not just Sidra Maya, according to me and many other people, the same who said, uh, my friend Prashant said, children on the road also believe that CBI is a cage parrot. Why investigate by an okay, agency look, or a Supreme body, Court, which is Supreme used as a... Wait, wait, Prashant, let him finish. Why? Let me finish. Why? Why? Let me finish. Just Prashant, let him finish. Seconds. I'll come to you right after that. 10 seconds, my friend, I'll not interrupt you, full time to you. The fact of the matter is, you know, not just the uh, Supreme Court observation, but we see a pattern here, the pattern in Jharkhand with Heman Soren, we see a pattern in Delhi with Arvind Kejriwal, the same pattern is being followed here. So therefore, when you lose the faith in CBI, it's better to be investigated by a much better body like a Karnataka Loka Yukta, which does not fear Chief Minister, because Karnataka Loka Yukta also prosecuted the sitting Chief Minister then, Mr. Yedi Arappa. So Karnataka Loka Yukta is welcome to file an FIR and prosecute Mr. Sidra Maya. Look at the charges. The CBI, okay, I just want to... lost his charge. Point, point noted, the, the charges, Prashant, before I come to you, I just wanted to list the charges that we're talking about here in this Muda scam case. Number one, criminal conspiracy, public servant knowingly disobeying the law, dishonest misappropriation of property, cheating, mischief and forgery, criminal intimidation, use of personal influence for undue advantage, misuse of government property for personal gain, illegally grabbing government land. These are the very, very grave charges that we are actually talking about in this entire affair. Now, remember that on his part, Mr. Siddharamaya and the Congress party have put out a united face. They have categorically denied that any wrongdoing has happened. They have pointed out that it was a BJP government in power. They have said that they are open to any investigation and they've said this is basically revenge politics by the BJP. Absolutely. But Prashant, the, you know, everything that's happening in court right now, uh, you know, is taking is going as per the normal procedure. The legal recourse that is available, uh, you know, to the BJP, to the, to, to, do, to the petitioners. The same way Siddharamaya has also approached court, he has faced a setback. Now there will be an investigation. But why is the BJP still calling for his resignation then? Let the investigation happen in a fair manner. Shiv, the same reason, the reason is simple. The same Congress and supporters who now who are saying the local actors should investigate, the same Sidramaya clipped the wings of Lokayakta then and brought in ACB, which after the High Court wrapped Sidramaya and his team on knuckles, then they had to go back on the decision. Now, mm. if a sitting CM appears before a Lokayakta police who happens to be the employee of the state government working under the Home Ministry of State Government, can he investigate properly? No. So let Sidramaya resign on moral grounds. He claims that he would never do these things. In the past, it is on record when Sidramaya said, if there is any allegation against me, I will resign. He claims to be the disciple of Ramakrishna Gade. Ramakrishna Gade resigned and then uh, come back, fought for polls after his name had uh, cropped up in a controversy. Let Sidramaya follow his mentor, resign, let the investigation happen. If at all he is found to be clean by the courts, let him come back and occupy his chair. If his Congress colleagues let him do. Everybody is aware that Sidramaya is involved, is guilty of this particular scam. They know that he will have to vacate his seat once the investigation is complete. So he is wanting to hold on to the power to the extent he can and probably indulge in more corruption. There's nothing it's, more. It is true. Syed, Syed, it is true. Friend Syed, on talking about Heman Soren, Kejriwal, Sidramaya, Lalu, all birds of the same feather flock together. So therefore, <laughs> Let me, they are no, no, probably Sayed, uh, in Sayed, two questions. so that all the corrupt people are on one side. You can't really uh, find fault with them. They are Sayed, in see, corruption, we, we neck do deep know, in corruption. And they know, are now, I, I personally... That, uh, Prashant, hold on, uh, hold the horses. Sayed, Sayed. We do know that in the, pol in the course of political conversations, all parties ask for each other's leaders' resignations. That keeps happening no matter what happens. You know, uh, you know one can dismiss it as, you know, that is part of the, you know, uh, political lexicon. Uh, you know, when, when, right. there is a, uh, when there are allegations of corruption, you should resign and step aside. And when you mm. are cleared, you can come back to power. The Congress has also done that many, many times. So in many Absolutely. ways, this is the Congress's own playbook that is being thrown mm. back at it. Fair, How fair many point, times uh, has Siddharamaya, D.K. Shivakumar and others called for the resignation of Bombay, Yadurappa and others in a very similar vein? Fair, fair point, uh, Shivaru Saab. I completely concede to that front. Also, as a matter of fact, it's it's very fair that my good friend Prashant uh, G.S., who's a fantastic spokesperson of Karnataka BJP, is asking for a resignation. But he also needs to go back and learn from history. 
those who don't learn from history will repeat their mistakes what happened in the case of yadiyurappa in january 2011 he was asked for a resignation internal polit- party politics all of that how much time did it take him to resign 9 months sir 9 months it took him to resign he just did not resign there was a 1000 page backed evidence from the lokayukta report and then mm. he had to step down also you need to understand sir lokayukta was also then under the same chief minister yadiyurappa bjp did we say that oh it's all uh, uh, match fix no sir half faith in lokayukta it's one of the finest bodies and agencies that we have in karnataka and we as karnataka police take great, great pride in that and also shiv sab the other question that you've raised yes political pa- uh, parties are bound to bring this about but what pains me sir is when cbi ed are used like a political puppets the one fact more is that we need to understand here shiv sab take it the governor well within his right i hail the karnataka high court order that governor can give the prosecution orders but why didn't the governor give prosecution orders against hg kumar swami why is my friend prashant asking for his resignation he's out on I, bail he's also no, no, i i i, I, I agree with you in, you know, in, in principle sayed in principle sayed i actually agree with you and i also agree with what mr sidramaiah says about let there be an open and fair investigation all those who have benefited from any muda scam or irregularity should be punished whether it is kumar swami whether it is people in the bjp whether it is sidramaiah whoever it is that is my stand as far as corruption is concerned one fair, quick fair question stand. before i go back to prashant is sayed yes, could it also be could it also be that while the congress is putting up this united front Uh, uh it is not so united from within we've seen so many people you know who have <laughs> ambitions they you know they are smelling trouble in the water they believe that you know if enough heat can be mounted on sidramaiah they may get a chance to be the chief minister you know who i'm talking about maybe that's <laughs> what is also made mr sidramaiah a little wary shiv shivar sahab uh, let me tell you as a matter of fact you know i think i think because you are also from karnataka mangalore bangalore you know the politics so well i know you who you are hinting at let me set the cat among the pigeons i know the direction is uh, towards dk shiv kumar and rightly mm. so of course he's made his uh, ambitions out in the open that he also some day wishes to be a chief minister but when it comes to internally party there are going to be democracies there are going to be differences but when it comes against the party's chief minister i can assure you a fact shivana that dk shiv kumar and his team and karnataka congress stands very strongly in this matter okay. with sidra okay okay prashant what do you think about that do you think that uh, you know others within the congress party are sniffing trouble and that it's not as much of a united front as it claims to be if look at the statement of sidra maya when he praised kc venugopal for his election victory in 2018 and the political uh, uh, knowledge of kc venugopal that he predicted sidra maya would lose in chamundeshwari and would win because sidramaiah in his life has never thanked people who helped him like ramkrishna gade and deva gade he has never thanked anybody he is thanking venugopal in a bit to trying to appease rahul gandhi to say please look i am uh, trying to please venugopal who in turn will always please you therefore let me continue it's again because sidramaiah is aware that hk party lembi patel dk shukumar satish jarkioli parmeshwara everybody are probably waiting uh, for sidramaiah to get out internally they are saying yes look let this man step down and then we will play that uh, play our cards everybody is waiting with bated breath in fact okay. more than the opposition it's the internal congress people who want sidramaiah to resign so that one of them would become the cm from the congress okay. that's their okay. mistake okay. they are trying to only uh, portray united face for the sake of media but otherwise they are very clear they don't want sidramaiah as cm and uh, in whichever way he resigns as bjp we would not uh, let sidramaiah not resign let me uh, okay. will continue sayed i'm just coming uh, to you in 30 seconds 30 seconds i'm like coming to you i just want to i just want to tell our viewers what mr sidramaiah's options are right now he has many legal options he is conferring with his legal team including senior lawyer and congress leader uh, abhishek manu singhvi he could file a petition before uh, the high court's division bench It's option number 2 he can order Uh, uh he can he can challenge the order in the supreme court obviously option number 3 a request can be made in the supreme court to stay the high court order option number 4 there could be a plea to stay proceedings that can be filed in an mp mla court sayed uh at the end of the day you can answer you can you can give your response to what prashant said but my question also is now that over a year about 15 months after the election in which the congress party came to power you know with handsome numbers anti corruption you know cleaning up the system was one of their big planks pay cm 
you know, all those campaigns were very, very effective in Karnataka. I was there covering that election. Yes, and it yes, seems that this, for the first time, has unnerved uh, and made Mr. Siddharamaya feel the heat. That is more than apparent now. He feels absolutely that this could be Shivana. more than just a passing piece of headline. Shivana, absolutely not. As a matter of fact, if you told me any leader of the Congress party maybe would have uh, been very nervous and shaken at the moment. I'm sure you've interacted with him in several interviews and so on and so forth. Yes. This is a very strong leader. Over the last 40 years, not a single blot against this man. We need to understand he's been a leader of the master who's always spoken of social equality, social justice, SEs, STs, everybody coming together on the land of Baswarna. Also, as a matter of fact, quickly answering my friend Prashant GS, the state spokesperson of BJP. My dear friend, you did bring about the truth and reality of a party, which is Congress party. There are bound to be differences, just like your party. What was Vijayendra called? Son of Yadiyarappa. He was called a remote control CM. Yadiyarappa is only the face. What about the fights between Yadiyarappa and Ishwarappa? It is famous. Hmm. There is a Karnataka legend and tale called Snake and Mangoose. And there was a movie which got shelved. Yadiyarappa versus Ishwarappa. We know everything. Ishwarappa, as a matter of fact, has called Yadiyarappa, uh, you know, uh, somebody who is nepotistic and so on and so forth. Any party, be the BJP, JDS, Congress, there are bound to be differences of opinions and uh, everybody wants to be in power. But the fact okay. of the uh, matter is, when it comes to the uh, Karnataka Muda alleged scam, Congress party stands together with... No, it is a scam, not Maya. alleged I can scam. Okay. You, for the next five years, he will not resign. He is going to La stay okay. strong as a chief minister and he will be there. Mark my verse shifts up. 136 MLAs out of 224. Congress is looking good. Congress is looking strong. And Congress is here to stay here in the land of Karnataka. CM Sidramaya will continue okay. at its peak. Alleged scams will come. Nothing can... Will go. Okay, but Prashant, Sidramaya last word to you. Sayed says, nothing can break Sidramaya. He is stable. He has the Congress behind him. There may be some squabbles, which is normal in all parties, but he is not going anywhere. Last word, no, It's not about what Sidramay personally wants to do. There is something called law of the land. There's something called constitution, which Congress doesn't believe in. When the matter is before the court and mm. the on merits also, the court has also brought out a lot of factors which are brought out in the initial comment itself as to how Sidramaya's family is benefited. There is no way out for Sidramaya unless he morally resigns. At least he is saving himself from embarrassment for uh, from uh, future references to the court when court will have to order uh, him to be uh, removed from the post after he is indicted and if he is imprisoned for more, uh, get a sentence for more than uh, six years, so on and so forth. There's a lot of things what? possible. So Sidramaya oh, yeah. should take the moral high ground which he always claims to preach Just others and resign. Let him come back. If he has one got 136 question. MLS, they should make way for him later on if, he's, if his okay. name is clear. Everybody is aware that Sidramaya Fair will enough. not come back because he is involved enough. in corruption and he will be indicted by the court. They are aware. My Therefore, he is not willing to give up the chair. If, I, if he was an honest Prashant. politician, he should my have friend. resigned and then can said, I, I, I would face it. Okay, can so see? the BJP is not going to climb down from that demand. 10 seconds, Sayed. 10 seconds. 10, 10 seconds. seconds. Thank you, Shivana. My friend Prashant, fair point, sir. Now quickly tell me, if Sidramay needs to resign, can you on the same breath say that Union Minister of your alliance, Kumar Anna should resign, HD Kumaraswamy, GT Deve Gowda, uh, BJP MLC Vishwanath, they are all named under the Muda alleged uh, scams beneficiaries. They are also beneficiaries. There are regularities. No, be beneficiary does not Why mean the same names and beneficiaries. It must be beneficiaries in the eyes of law. <laughs> the court must point out that they have been unduly favored. And then you can take a call. Here, I repeat, I repeat, para 51, para 51, para 54, Kumar para 56 of the judgment, right from page 177, 186 and 191. Please read it carefully, Syed, so that for your further debate, it will be helpful for you. Okay, so I'm, I'm out of time. I'm, I'm out of time. Categorically given a fine very interesting, very interesting to see what's going to actually happen next as far as Siddharamaya, the BJP and the Congress is concerned. We will continue to report all facts on both sides of this unfolding story. The enormously revered shrine Tirupati in Andhra Pradesh has become a political battlefield in the wake of reports of adulteration of the famous Tirupati Laddu Prasadam that goes to millions of devotees every single month. Now, former Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, Jagan Reddy, and current Chief Minister, Chandra Babu Naidu, are facing off over the alleged adulterated ghee in the Tirupati Prasadam. Well, amidst this uproar, Jagan's decision to visit Tirupati this Sunday has created a huge uproar with both the BJP and the Telugu Desam Party demanding that Jagan declare his faith 
before entering the temple shrine as per rules by the temple administration. Meanwhile, the BJP's Madhavi Lata too visited Tirupati, seeking forgiveness over the Tirupati Prasad adulteration. Here's everything you need to know about the political face-off in Tirupati. The holy city of Tirupati, a spiritual center for millions, is now at the center of a ghee adulteration controversy. Allegations of animal fat and fish oil in ghee supplied to the Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanams has triggered a bitter clash between Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Chandra Babu Naidu and former Chief Minister Jagan Mohan Reddy. As the controversy deepens, YSR CP Chief Jagan Reddy has announced a visit to the Tirupati Temple this Sunday. Jagan has called for a statewide temple rituals to atone for Chief Minister Naidu's allegation of adulteration in Tirupati Laddus. The decision by Jagan comes days after Naidu questioned why the former Chief Minister never visited the Tirupati Temple even though his father YS Rajashekhar Reddy offered prayers there. Person belonging to other religions, whether it be Christianity or Islam, if they intend to have a darshan of Lord Balaji, then they have to sign a declaration stating that they have faith in him. So, all these years, as Chief Minister, Jagan Reddy never signed. The BJP has demanded that Jagan Reddy, a practicing Christian, should declare his faith before entering the shrine, a protocol for all non Hindu visitors. Mr. Jagan wants to come to Tirupati. How can he be allowed? Unless until he would not write it and give it to us, that he accepts the Hindu dharma, until he should not be allowed to even come to Tirupati. Because he has never outspoken on this. This is uh, one of the senior leaders there who's arrived here and they're also going to go ahead and meeting with, uh, you know, the executive officer here at the TTD administrative block where they're going to go and file, a, a, you know, a, file a petition as well demanding that for Jagan Mohan Reddy to arrive here, he has to file this affidavit that has to be filed by every non-Hindu uh, at Alipiri uh, footsteps just before entering into Tirumala, without which the BJP will take forth its protest and that too in a massive nano. After Pavan Kalyan's 11 temple penance, BJP leader Madhvi Lata visited Tirupati with a group of seers seeking to restore the temple's sanctity in the eyes of the devotees. <laughs> उनसे मांगना है भीख अब तो जागृत हो जाइए भगवान बहुत हो गया इनके हार कर जो भी किया उसने लेट लेट देयर बी अ वेरी सीरियस इन्वेस्टिगेशन फॉर्मर अटॉर्नी जनरल सुधाकर रेड्डी टू फेस्ड फ्लैग ओवर हिज कंट्रोवर्शियल रिमार्क्स अबाउट द प्रसादम इट इज नॉनसेंसिकल द प्राइस ऑफ द पिग ऑयल इज अबाउट 1400 rupees a kilo Jagan has rejected allegations of adulteration during his tenure and accused Naidu of misleading public and stirring up a needless controversy. With Apurva Jayachandran from Tirupati Bureau Report, India Today. And India today's Apurva Jaya Chandran is in Tirupati in Andhra Pradesh and she joins me live from the Hill Shrine. Uh, 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 Apurva, Jagan Reddy heading to Tirupati later this week. This weekend, in fact, uh, has thrown up a huge uh, potential political meltdown over there. What are the preparations being made? You've been speaking to, you know, the priests and the authorities there in Tirupati. How are they seeing this entire political fallout? Well, Shiv is...
it's going to be quite tricky what is going to be the next uh, you know 24 to 48 hours remember all through the five years that the YSRCP had been in governance here uh, in Andhra Pradesh that is the last five years what we are getting to know from the TDP is that there hadn't been once uh, that uh, the TDP alleges Jagan Mohan Reddy had signed this affidavit uh, him being a practicing Christian uh, in fact they also go on and say that this particular affidavit is in fact an affidavit that needs to be signed by every non-Hindu who wants to have a darshan of Lord Venkateshwara. In fact, mm. uh, you know, just behind me is the Holy Shrine, the Sanctus Sectorium is just inside. And what we are getting to learn is that uh, BJP is also uh, here uh, in Tirumalad where they're demanding that uh, not only should Jagan Mohan Reddy, uh, you know, sign this affidavit uh, that every non-Hindu has to sign as per the TTD laws that are here, uh, uh, you know, as per the act uh, of the Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanas, but it also says that uh, this affidavit says every person who signs this affidavit has belief on Lord Venkateshwara mm. and that they wish to go ahead and have a darshan and that's what the TD, uh, you know, the BJP wants Jagan Mohan ready to do. Last five years, they say he has failed to uh, file any kind of such affidavits with the Tirumala despite him having had year after year darshans, be it for the Brahmotsav that he has visited with his family or several other times when he has come here for a darshan year at Tirumala. But now now that the uh, you know this uh, laddu controversy has uh, come up now the tirumala tirupati devasthanams uh, there after ensuring there has been a cleansing ritual that has been completed uh, here just a couple of days back now the bjp says that the only way that jagan mohan reddy okay. will even likely be allowed into you know cross alapri which is a gateway there for tirumala is if he signs the said affidavit Shiv. and uh, apurva you know beyond the politics the uh, uh, what is the mood in the town of Tirupati Tirumala? You know, are devotees still concerned about the purity of the Laddu Prasadam? Uh, are they still coming in big numbers? What is the mood there? just around the corner of Brahmotsvam which is one of the grand celebrations that takes place here every year without fail in Tirumala there are you know grand darshans of the Lord people throng here from long and far just to have a you know a glimpse of the Lord during this time that is during this Brahmotsvam period and as you can see behind me there are definitely you know several devotees who have mm. been uh, you know thronging here line after line even the Laddu counters if you see uh, everywhere there are just devotees who are waiting patiently in line to go and clash, uh, catch a glimpse of the Lord. In fact, I must add out here that the Tirumala Tirupati Devasthanams over the last seven days alone, uh, you know, has recorded uh, roughly over seven lakh plus sale of the Tirumala Srivari Laddu. This amidst the controversy there. So, you know, it's not like the controversy has affected the sales of the Srivari Laddu. Uh, you know, in fact, uh, if we see, yes, the, the sentiments of the people has definitely taken a hurt, but they do believe in the Lord and they do believe that this government somehow will rectify the changes, especially now that the Chief Minister Narachandra Babu Naidu has ordered for a special investigation team to be set in yes. place, especially run by an IG rank or a senior official. All right, Apurva, thanks very much for joining us from Tirupati. Uh, beautiful views there of the temple itself. Uh, remember that uh, Apurva will be fronting our coverage right through this uh, turbulent episode in the Hill Shrine, including the potential political meltdown that takes place this Sunday when Jagan Reddy arrives there. We obviously hope that everything is sorted out in a manner that is acceptable and fair to the millions of devotees uh, in whom there is so much faith for Lord Venkateshwara in Tirupati. Thanks very much, Apurva, for joining us on that. But away from the Hill Shrine itself, the politics, the face-offs, the claims, counterclaims, the attacks between stars continue. Unabated actor Prakash Raj is also waded into the Tirupati controversy. Prakash Raj versus Deputy Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh and star actor himself, Pavan Kalyan, has erupted over the Tirupati Prasadam Rao. Prakash Raj on social media took a pot shot at Pavan Kalyan, who then responded. Take a look at how it played out.
Andhra Pradesh Deputy Chief Minister Pawan Kalyan and actor Prakash Raj are locked in a showdown over the Tirupati ghee adulteration controversy. This after Prakash Raj asked Pawan Kalyan to focus on investigating the Laddu Prasad matter rather than stoking communal tensions. Hitting back, Pawan Kalyan accused Prakash Raj of making a mockery of Hindu sentiments. Prakash Raj Garu, you have to learn your lessons. I respect you. It's not just Prakash Raj Garu, all the people who thinks in the name of secularism, you're going haywire. Let me tell you guys, we are extremely hurt. Don't make a mockery out of our sentiments. We are deeply, deeply hurt. Prakash Raj claimed that his statement was misunderstood. Shri Pavan Kalyan Garu, I will choose my press meet. I will tell you, 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 Mupayo tarik terwata, wajib, mi prati mata ki samadhan ciptan. Ia macam, mi kubilai te, na tweet ni malai cerdwandi, artan jas kondi, please. Amid this, Tamil actor Karthi apologised to Pawan Kalyan on social media after the Andhra Deputy Chief Minister slammed him for his comments on the Tirupati Ladu controversy. Don't you ever say that. Don't. Don't you ever try dare to say that, please. I respect you as actors, but when it comes to Sanatana Dharma, please, you have to think hundred times before you saying a word. One comment. The Tirupati Ghirao has evidently caught the South Indian film industry on the wrong foot. Bureau Report, India Today. While the new leader of Bangladesh, Mohamed Yunus, is on his first foreign tour, back in Naya Bangladesh, minority Hindus continue to be reportedly persecuted. Hindus continue to be targeted in Naya Bangladesh, despite the new government's categorical denials of any attacks whatsoever, or at least any large-scale attacks. Well, radical Islamist groups are protesting against the celebration of Durga Puja in the country, reports India Today's Ashutosh Mishra. Posters have been put up against closing roads to set up pandals and demanding no holidays be declared by the new government for the Hindu festival of Durga Puja. These Islamist groups have also said that idol immersion will pollute water bodies and should therefore be banned. More recently, pictures of vandalized idols had also surfaced from Bangladesh. The stir is the latest in a series of targeted attacks against Hindu minorities in Bangladesh since Sheikh Hasina's ouster on August the 5th. I want to go across to India today's Ashutosh Mishra, uh, the first Indian journalist to arrive in Dhaka after the ouster of Sheikh Hasina. He's been tracking all of these stories. He's been, uh, uh, he's been conducting a relentless reality check uh, from the ground and from the outside of what's been happening in Bangladesh. These are very disturbing reports coming in, Ashutosh, that you're bringing us, uh, that there are protests over, uh, you know, uh, giving a holiday, etc., for Durga Puja. What are you hearing? You've been in touch with many of the people involved right now, and they are too, uh, you know, afraid to actually speak on camera right now. Uh, that was the situation. In fact, when I reached out to a few of these uh, committee leaders and the community leaders, uh, they are literally afraid because they say the moment, uh, you know, there is any uh, identification that these people are speaking, there could be possibly they'll be targeted. And what we're seeing are these images, the idols were uh, uh, vandalized, the pandals have been vandalized. On 21st September, you'll be shocked to know that in a district like Khulna, which is a bastion of Jamaat Islami, there were leaflets and pamphlets were distributed in certain temples, which was written, mm -hmm. pay five lakh. Uh, 5 lakh taka which is a Bangladeshi currency pay 5 lakh that was extortion money if you want to celebrate Durga Puja uh, day before yesterday there was a protest in uh, Dhaka's uh, uh, sector 17 sector 13 and sector 18 normally there are the playgrounds every year there is a massive celebration of Durga Puja because all the Bengalis be it in West Bengal or Bangladesh they celebrate this is the biggest festival and uh, every year there used to be Pandal from day before yesterday the, the radical Islamic group are literally carrying out marches on the street and 
and they're opposing that they should not be allowed. Now they say uh, you cannot immerse the idols in the in the river or in the open water mm. because it pollutes. More importantly, you remember Bangladesh had announced they will uh, send hilsar, very you know iconic fish, to India. Now these groups are also opposing. These are our rare species. Do not uh, export. Do not send hilsar fish to India because every year during particularly the festive season we see huge stock of hilsa comes from Bangladesh to India. In a way, there are statements also say that in these temples, the group of Hindus are, uh, uh, you know, talk about Akhand Bharat, they do yes. conspiracy against uh, Bangladesh. So what all you can imagine what is happening, certain radical groups which were banned during Sheikh Hasina regime have now been, you know, the ban has been lifted. They are openly filling out the way they are now targeting the minorities, saying that the, you shouldn't be holding pandal on the roads that blocks the traffic. Uh, there shouldn't be gathering. There shouldn't be a banner in the temple. Do not put out a banner because this is your own festival and this yes. is very religious activities. More importantly, often during Durga Puja, since it's also a government holiday, the government acknowledges mm. that you remember the president uh, invited all the Hindu bureaucrats uh, uh, to the yes. to for this uh, ceremony for the festival. Now the radical groups are also demanding do not announce public holiday during Durga Puja because it's only a particular co community and uh, it's it's not for larger interest of the company. So what all not the people are afraid and perhaps this is alarming situation for Bangladesh in the time when we have the United Nations team which which is also uh, you know Absolutely. investigating the case of assault attacks uh, uh, post uh, 5th of August. But this looks like literally alarming situation and the world has literally kept its eyes totally blind. They're not even looking at what is happening in Bangladesh when the minorities are being targeted. Very, very important. Whether it is Europe, whether it is the United States, whether it is a host of other countries, there appears to be an almost systematic unwillingness to acknowledge what is taking place in Bangladesh at this time. Ashutosh, continue to track that story. You are the only Indian journalist continuing to keep an eye on what's happening in Bangladesh. His ground reports on and off Bangladesh will continue to be here on India Today. That's a wrap on Five Live.